right up the nose. <laughs> All right, I have accepted the terms of the, the meeting. I have too. All right, we're live. I'm here with Steve and Fred, aka Grumpy Pants. Hello. Uh, and um, I've been a fan of you guys' music since 2000 when I got uh, chronometry. Uh, that was that was my entry point to you guys, and then I worked my way backward, and then each release that's come out, I've, I've pretty much gotten, uh, with the exception of some of the, uh, the live DVDs, but other than that, I've got pretty much everything. Uh, kind of, I tried earlier to, to order the new one, but my PayPal was backed up, so I'll, I'll do it later. And you do have it though, right? <laughs> I have the, the digital. Yeah, right. Yeah, you right. sent me that. And uh, I put it onto my uh, one of these so I can listen to it in my car, you know, get get as much listening as possible. And it's like, it, just like the last one, it's like you keep on evolving. You know, you don't, it seems like the last few albums, you're not staying in that area. You're just like, you know, going to the next level. So to speak. Especially with this one, the heaviest one got to date. I don't think any album we've done is exactly like the predecessor, but and then there have been a few, you know, turns in the road where we do something radically different. We kind of eased into this transition with the last album. And then at some point we made a conscious decision to just uh, put a little more rock in our prog rock. Yeah, and you, you can hear it, you know, there's a, the guitars seem to be more, I mean, the hard rock in some areas and then metal in other areas. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we have a, a background of producing all kinds of music, but, um, I played in a metal band years ago. It's not like it's something we're doing just to experiment and say, hey, look what we did. This is kind of in our, it's in our blood. Um, but yeah, we do all kinds of music here at the studio. So, um, but the story that we were telling also, I think needed to be uh, borderline prog metal, I guess. Well, I don't call it prog metal. I still call it rock um, or metal. I don't think of what we're doing as being prog metal. Really. Not the way it's described now. Yeah. It's more like heavy rock slash acid rock almost to a large extent. There's a couple kind of consciously metal moments, but only a couple. A couple of the really, you know, heavily down tuned. So I think we were conscious of not wanting to look because even though we knew we were drifting that way and that we did want to get heavier there was probably a danger of looking like we were jumping on a bandwagon because you know, some other bands have kind of gone that way. So we really didn't want to go the heavy duty technical dream theater. No right. direction of metal. We wanted to kind of drift off and, and more of a, a, um, almost a King's X maybe kind of. Yeah, maybe riff, it's a, it's a progressive, rock, a progressive rock influenced metal is kind of what it is. Um, I don't even like, I mean, it's a sacrilege, I know, but what's termed as uh, the groups that are, fall under that umbrella of progressive metal, I, I don't listen to. It's just not something I, I enjoy. So I certainly wouldn't want to do that. Right, yeah. Well, the, what I noticed, too, is um, it doesn't have, though, you know, the typical, so it wouldn't be prog metal because it didn't have that typical, you know, guitar noodling that they right that yeah. they're more famous for. You know, it's like it's it's just rooted. You know, you guys just stick with the music instead of like, you know, hey, look what I can do. You know. Yeah, I think this is more about 
rhythm and and uh than it is showing off you know pyro right. that kind of thing it's i mean the the rock part is more in how the rhythm is presented in those riffs um, yeah that and, we did. and even though i'm playing a lot of the rhythm guitar and even steve's playing you know some of the riff based stuff and we you know we have a very talented young guitar player ringer who came in to play all the leads and all the really great stuff but he is an old school guitar player even though i don't know if he's actually hit 20 yet has he he's i think he's 20 wow uh, but yeah he's been on our last four albums i think yeah but he's he's not a you know tapping whammy bar whammy bar kind of dude he is old school which just you no know, alex lifeson which is exactly yeah. what we were looking for all right right and you know the question i'm sure everybody you know singer Hannah, you know because you guys you know you, you, you that's the one thing is like you do in the last few albums you kind of change the singers up a little bit and i was just curious, how'd you find hannah well it's been a once again kind of a slow process because you know we've worked with susie for so long we just didn't necessarily want to have to be in a position to let her go basically but it was getting to be very difficult because she lives very very far away and you know, she has a husband and kids and a whole big life going on that you know we were wondering if she was going to be hurt if we told her that um, maybe it was kind of time to face that out or whether she'd be relieved and um still don't we, know. <laughs> yeah we still don't know exactly <laughs> She took it awfully well, so I'm kind of leaning towards relief. Well, I'm sure they're the twins. I told her a year ago, I mean, she was only on one song on the last album, and I told her a year ago, you know, we've got a girl that's local, we'd like to work with her, and she said she totally understood, she loves us, we're, we're like her family, so, you know, we're going to take that as, uh, you know, an endorsement, I guess. But yeah. Hannah came in to do... Uh, an album a couple of songs on some another group's project and we had been told in advance of her coming that we were going to be blown away with her voice and of course we were and asked her to come back in and try well she sang on a song on, on a matter of time which we released digitally last year and then she uh we had her come in and sing a song by flyleaf that's something she picked out so that we could hear kind of how she would do with uh you know metal or hard rock and and then we really had to think right then when we heard it we're we're pretty stunned and amazed and impressed so one song at a time we began to ask her to come back in and work on it and she was just a trooper uh, she was here repeatedly working on you know each song uh, to kind of make it special so yeah, and that's a luxury we haven't had in a very long time. That we've really had got to a point with a lot of singers that lived in other parts of the country that you know we just have to send them our rough demos of how we thought it should be, and they go into a studio where they were at and they cut it and send it back, and it always came out great. I mean, everybody's super professional, but it's not like being in the studio with a singer, hearing what works and what doesn't work, and being able to polish the rough edges and make changes like well that just sounds stupid and we should change that <laughs> and things like that so yeah, we, we haven't could. had that luxury in a long time and we did on this album and it really shows yeah i you know when i listen to it uh the music her, you know hannah's voice fits very well with this music and um and it's it's almost like this is a, a natural thing for her because it just flows you know, it didn't seem out of place, anything. That's that's the one thing, well, you know, you got, you know, I think when, when you introduce a new singer, you know, how are the, the fans gonna react? And it's like, it's almost as if she's been there pretty much all, all along. Yeah. Yeah, we get along really well with her. So it's a good dynamic. She's yeah. really funny. Uh, so when, the three of us yeah, are here just super nice down to earth you know great person so yeah, that makes yeah. makes it nice yeah oh, yeah 
that's um and then we wrote i mean the songs uh there were only like two songs the ones that i sing that were kind of written and that's why i sang them um and then anthem to Andereth was the first glass hammer song she sang lead on which i wrote specifically for her just to see how it would work and you know, then everything else kind of was tailored for her after that. And we just had to kind of keep going with her till we had what everybody was happy with, like Fred said. Yeah, yeah just like the last one, um, every, when I, once I heard it, it's like the, just stick in your head. And to me, it, if a band's music does that, you know, then I know that that's classifies basically as a timeless album. That's, you know, that's that's amazing. That's really good because I mean, one thing that Glass Hammer has rarely been described as through the years is catchy, right? <laughs> yeah. So being able to come up with something that could be described as catchy is is pretty awesome. I'm, I'm well, just to hear that. trying to be objective about it. If I'm listening to a song that Fred wrote on this album, which I didn't write, then those the the riffs themselves are hooks. Uh, they keep coming back as opposed to, you know, like a lot of prog just kind of meanders down a trail and sort of runs out of steam somewhere. Uh, these songs have hooks, I think, in the melodies of, in the melody that uh, Hannah sang, which we actually have choruses now, you know, like verses right. and choruses and uh, themes that kind of come back and repeat. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can see where it would be. And that's a good thing. I think we'll stick with that. It's more songwriting than, than, you know, noodling and pasting things together. Yeah, and part of the reason, hopefully, that it works is a lot of bands decide that they're going to get to a phase in their careers where not necessarily trying to be more commercial or reach a bigger audience, but you do want to kind of rethink how you approach your craft of what you're doing. You know, Rush did it and and Genesis did it, and Yes did it, everybody did it. And I think the key to us doing it is that a lot of bands get kind of gentler and mellower when they hit that phase of their career. Right. And I think we're trying to do the exact opposite. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, I, I have noticed some bands that they do, um, either they get gentler or it's almost like they're kind of going through the motions, you know, yeah. and it's like, it's just not punching and, in the face anymore. Oh, it's like you got to, you got to, you know, like you guys have been doing the past couple albums, just change it up, you know, and and you still have the signature sound there, you know. So it's like that, that's that's really that's the important thing is to keep the signature sound. Yeah, yeah. I don't think and, we can ever really honestly get away from the signature sounds because. You know, ultimately, Fred's going to approach Hammond the same way he does and always has. I'm, my bass is always going to sound similar. Um, and and you put the two together and people can recognize it no matter, you know, what the song may sound like. They'll know that's Glass Hammer. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And since, I mean, a lot of the keyboards obviously are backing off because the guitar is getting a lot more prominent. And this album doesn't have very much synthesizer at all there's a little bit of mini mode there's not a whole lot of mellotron there's not really a whole lot of piano there's a lot of organ i mean organ is the thing that came back big to, to fit into the sound it's like oh cool you know that big heavy organ fits great with a big heavy guitar just like you know old acid rock deep and, purple. and deep purple so right it's yeah, like sweet I... I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna play organ perfect <laughs> i mean that was that was the one thing that i, I noticed with the music it's like you had that that heavy, you know, crunchy guitar, and then all of a sudden you hear that ham and organ come in, come in, and it was like, that's it's a natural thing, whether it's prog or not. They, they, they work so well together. Those yeah. two sets. And I don't know why, you know, other band, you know, you know, non-prog bands, you know, that are rock oriented don't don't try that. You know. Well, the you know, eighties metal. Uh, which I'm very familiar with because that's what I did. It was uh, all about uh, the guitar player and the singer. 
And of course, if you ask the, the guitar player, well, what's it all about? He'd say the guitar and the singer right. would say, oh, hey, you know, and that's the way it was. And everybody else was schlepped off to the side. We'd be told uh, as a bass player, I was told countless times, no, dude, man, just play in the pocket, play in the pocket, you know, uh, so they want the bass to be heard or to stand out. Um, and they dominated those bands back then. Um, yeah. Why there couldn't be some sort of middle ground in metal, I don't know. And then you get later to some of the prog metal bands, and it's still kind of all about the guitar player, even if it's a keyboard player. It's well, all the show danger off. now, and we even ran into this ourselves, is you start using seven and eight string guitars, the guitar gets so low, it's like there's What's no room the, for a bass, bass at all anymore, except just. You, you, sometimes you can't even go an octave lower than that so you just become the low string of the guitar and you know that's that's been a syndrome of a lot of prog metal bands so that was even kind of a tricky one for us we we let that happen a few places but i don't want there to be too much of that right yeah Why i mean not? i'm pretty happy with i mean the bass cuts right through all of that uh, and when the There's hammond needs to do it, it stays right right in there we we know enough how to you know take the faders and turn the rhythm guitars down uh, and let the <laughs> let the organ speak, you know. And uh, of course, um, since Fred played a lot of the rhythm and uh, and guitars and organ, then he didn't have to compete with himself. <laughs> he yeah. didn't hurt. He didn't hurt your own feelings, did you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you were talking about seven string. I think I even heard that there's an eight string out. You know, guitars. Yeah, oh, yeah. Not yeah. And I think well, they string guitars and they're both low. It's not like one's low and one's high. All right. And it's like, I don't, you know, in the prog metal sound, the guitars, I don't really like the sound of that. It doesn't, it doesn't sound warm. No, it is. You're right. When you get down to that low, kind of the only way you can amplify it is with that really bright, kind of harsh, metally guitar tone. That, that's, a, that's true. Yeah, that's why. Well, that's part of the. The trick to, to writing this kind of stuff, though, is that if you want it to sound meaner or scary, the lower you go. Right. You know, that, that was kind of a Sabbath thing. Uh, yeah. Black Sabbath, you, you keep uh, tuning it down, and it gets a little little weirder when you do. Hopefully, so it's, a tool, the, it's a tool you can use if you want to go for a particular sound. Yeah, I think the fact that it only happens like three times in the album make it effective whereas if it was every single song oh good no no get over that real fast <laughs> yeah yeah that um that's what you know that's why i like i like bands that don't do that you know because it's like there's no feeling to it and it's it's why you know in all honesty uh i kind of um, getting Dream Theater albums because it's just that feeling every album had that same tone and it's like um, there was no, they weren't changing it up. Yeah. You know, that's the one thing is they weren't changing it up and I don't, you know, and it, it was almost like they were doing the same album over and over. At least that's, to my, yeah. my well, it's an album their fans really, really like, so. Yeah, you know, I think you know there's some people that are stuck in a in a niche, you know, where they what they want the, their bands to sound like. And for me, it's like if you claim to be a pro progressive rock or progressive metal band, you need to progress. You know, you have, you can't just stay in one place. Well, if you can churn out the same thing over and over again, and your album sales don't suffer you know or they improve then that would be incentive for some bands to to do that if that's what yeah. it's all about i just you know I, I there's i think a lot of prog bands are guilty of that though it's uh especially i mean the newer ones and by new i mean the last 30 years um it's just uninteresting uh if you could you know, i think part of that happens because you do have a band you've got five piece bands and and they all have some sort of decision um, or the ability to make decisions about the music and so it's all being done through like this uh, uh, a democracy you right. know where you've got everybody's got to be happy and, and that doesn't yeah. work uh, and I think <laughs> the music suffers so if you've got a, a band like Glass Hammer where 
it's a duo songwriting team and we kind of steer the ship uh and then the members are happy with that and come in and uh do everything we ask and then and then they're allowed to add to but they've never offered to a suggestion about hey uh why don't we do a song like this it doesn't come across like that right you know yeah their suggestions are generally relegated to their bits and what their bits yeah they generally don't get involved in suggesting things about and hannah's not going to come in here and start talking about the bass and what steve should be no no i mean and primarily because hannah good actually we'd let her (laughs) hannah has a life and aaron has a life you know and they want to come in and knock out what they're doing uh and and they're content uh with what we do so and if it doesn't work i mean we're at a point now that if something's not working uh, if Aaron were to go, oh man, that song really, you know, it sucks, dude. We right. would stop, question that, and probably toss it. And same with Hannah. I can't sing this crap. What is this crap? Right, We'd probably right. toss it. But uh, you know that hasn't happened. Um, so yeah, it's it's good to have a duo uh, to keep things, I think, fresh because it's just two guys working together, going, hey, what are we what are we going to do? And as long as the two of us agree, then we do it. Yeah, are you guys going to? Are you continuing the story to yeah. another album? Okay. So yeah. Is it going to be a trilogy? Yes. Basically. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, I love, uh, I don't know that another band's done it or not. I, I think we might be the first. I Arian really probably love has. We need to go. Who did? Arian probably has. Well, yeah. He's done pairs of albums. End, I don't know if anybody's done three or not. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, I grew up. I mean, we both were Lord of the Rings fans and books used to come in trilogies like that. So this being a story, it seemed like a, a good idea to have a beginning, middle and end. Um, you know, plus it's just fun, something something new we haven't done. And the story, I, I like the story, so. Yeah, you know, uh, it's something, you know, to me, like you said, something, I think it's something new. I don't think people have done trilogies. I mean, they may have done a trilogy within one, album but not three out you know the whole thing yeah, yeah. Really, yeah trilogy of albums as opposed to just dealing with the trilogy of books yeah and you know i think the second album as far as the story goes didn't really push the story too far but that's kind of intentional it has to have a middle uh and then i i hope the story my plan is that it kind of goes somewhere really big on album three to to get to a conclusion and of course musically they're going to be different from each other uh i don't think this album sounds like the last one it had a lot of singers on it this album has very few singers on it um so we'll evolve even further it's it it would be fun though when it's all said and done for somebody to do a marathon and check them out back to back and see uh and see how it all works together now with albums, you know, now in this day and age that we have this, you know, Spotify and other streaming services, it seems like uh, you have um, a few months back, I did something, you know, the streaming versus physical slash digital media. And uh, after doing that, and months later, the conclusion I have is by the the CD in your library. Um, the streaming is just if you're out and about where you, you know, you don't have access to um, your your mute your library, or if you're trying to share with other people and saying, "Hey, you need to listen to this band because you know this is a, this is an important band to me, and I think it, you know you're going to like it, and I think it's a good way to share it." Um, but if they're if they're if people are just solely just using the streaming as their library, I you know that's where I don't I don't agree with you know. And I was just curious how you get. Well, I think, and Steve is probably going to take over this discussion more than me, but it's going to be a little bit of a discussion about uh, desire versus economic reality going forward. Well, yeah. I mean, we looked at it just the other day and I was surprised. Uh, CD sales, physical copies for us are still bigger than our digital downloads. 
which I'm amazed because the other is so easy. Uh, and it's but, not it's not the it's not a supply side problem. It is right now. I think the biggest problem is shipping. It's very difficult yeah. to affordably and reliably get a physical product where it's supposed to go. It's going to be a yeah. real serious situation. Well, a lot of our fans in Europe um, or anywhere besides America, if you if I were to send somebody a fifteen dollar CD, it's almost fifteen dollars, or it's probably more than that now um, to ship it to them. And they, they do buy them, but I feel pretty bad about it. I mean, it's a lot. And then on our end, too, we can't even keep up with the postage. Uh, it'll change, you know, weekly sometimes, and, and we can't keep up with it. So you can lose money really fast. And then you also have to sit around on the edge of your seat, hoping that everything actually gets there to where it's yeah, like it goes into the system. Who knows? anything yeah i mean we've had a lot of trouble you could you could ship it to england via china you do not know what's going to happen oh yeah we've watched cds and we have customers that have our tracking numbers our tracking number for their cd Uh, the cd will go to see what was it not recently something left chattanooga went to um, maybe nashville then went to miami and then went headed back to atlanta and then went to maybe Panama City or somewhere crazy and then went to his destination. We had a guy last on the last album that ordered, he was from Mexico and ordered a CD and we watched the thing go to China and then made its way back to the States and then went to Mexico. And so that you're, you're putting your product, uh, you know, in the hands of, of people <laughs> who are very disorganized right now. And, and just yeah, pray. So, I mean, we, we love physical CDs. We love the artwork. We love all the things you can do with it. We know that fans want to have those. And I don't know that we're going to stop doing them, but there may be a premium attached to it going forward. We'll see how. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and stream, I, yeah. And streaming is, you know, I'm, we put a few things on Spotify just to kind of whet people's appetite, but uh, I'm just no fan of anything, even if, bands don't make much money or make no money i'm just not a big fan of, of some company paying you 0. 0.000 whatever <clears throat> per plays you, you know there's no incentive for anybody to buy it and uh it costs there's money no incentive for anybody to make it yes well there so shouldn't be do, so but it people. costs money you know to keep the lights on in the yeah. studio it costs money to bring people in and do the things we do and hire designers to do the covers and you know it's it's not it's not cheap so we can't stream it and just give it away right right i was talking um last i this was last last year to um chris from eckelin and his students were uh he brought in some cds and they were going what is what are those you know yeah, really? like, wow. yeah, oh, yeah. and and yeah, and he goes yeah well this is you know we'd sell our cds and he goes, oh well, you know i can go get it on on spotify for free and it's like and he had to explain to them basically it's like okay yeah you know have that convenience of it but then it's like we the musicians don't get paid and how do you you know are you know and then i was just i kind of went with you know it's like what do the these students expect that um new musicians get your instruments for free and your studio time for free yeah and there's not, i don't think they realize really even what goes into it most of them though because to a lot of kids you can create content with your phone sitting in a room i mean what we're doing right now this might be content to a lot of people you just like it costs nothing to produce as far as they're concerned i'm going to make you know makeup videos and for the cost of some makeup, you sit on your phone and you have content. And all of a sudden, some of these people, they make a ton of money. Well, for them, it's also about views. How many, there's that age group where how many views did I get? How many likes did I get? And that matters so much more. And it's the same way with people that stream. I've had people come to the studio and they go out and they stream their stuff and you'll see them bragging on Facebook. Well, I've already got 20,000 streams. I'm like, well, right. is that going to help you pay for us to do what we just did for you no it's not so uh, i i mean i i have streamed music I, you know it's enjoyable the easy way to do things and and youtube as well but you know it's it's not gonna it's not it won't keep this operation alive that's for sure right 
And and if you noticed, uh, I think it was uh, when I reviewed your the chronomena where I just I focused I aimed the camera at the CD. You know, I personally think that when I'm re if I'm going to review something, the focus has got to be on the on the product, not me. Who cares? You know. I'm I'm talking about the product, you know, you know, it's not about exactly. You know, I I I talk about the product, you know, and and if I do, you know, when I feel strongly about something or if I have have the time to do it, you know, I'm just gonna aim the camera or, you know, get some artwork of the album cover and just say, hey, you know, this is the album, you know. Pay attention to the album, not not the person talking. And, you know, that's that's just how my opinion on it. I know I, you got these uh, reviewers out there that um, that's you know they get all kind of almost theatrical about the review. And and I used to see that a lot in the print, where you know some people would go as far as describing the atmosphere around them as they're listening to the oh CD. yeah yeah and, and i'm like going who cares <laughs> i don't care about that you tell me well about... that's a certain amount of that's just style and injecting yeah. personality into what they do and i my hat's off to any of you and all these people that re review especially the ones <clears throat> that are that love adjectives because oh, if yeah. you're going to review you know multiple albums over the course of a month or months you know you're having to come up with i mean there's only so many proggy adjectives like bombastic pompous overdone uh you know uh, washes of melatron washes of melatron <laughs> glorious uh you know there's only so many ways you can say that i tend to only read the glass hammer reviews and i'm amazed to think that they can go on and write another one the next week about somebody else. I, I have to compare them sometimes. Right, if right. They're just going to replace or something. But yeah, so it, I, to me, writing a review, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't, I just couldn't do that, you know. Um, I, think, I think there's an art to it. Yeah, that's, honestly, that's one of the many reasons why I stopped uh, five years ago. No, more than five years. Yeah, it's hard work, right. And, you know, and then on top of that, you have, uh, and it wasn't the bands, it was their, either the publicists or their labels that were like pressuring me to get it done yeah. by a certain date. And it's like, well, wait a second, you know, do you want a good review or, or, or do you want something that looks rushed, you know, and yeah, I have to hit people up, you know, ahead of time, uh, because you need a little, you need a couple of one liners, you know, just to help push the oh album. yeah oh so yeah i'm usually like hey give me a couple of lines if you like it and oh. and let me use that and do your review you know later and exactly. that seems to work out oh yeah you know and it's like um and that's why i love doing these these shows you know because you get to it's a mostly for you guys you guys can promote your album thank you yeah and um and also, to, too, it's like, you know, connecting with people, you know, and and once, you know, once this goes, uh, when I put it up on my YouTube channel, people can go and watch it, you know, at their leisure. And, and hopefully, maybe a new fan or two, or maybe more, you know. That'd be nice. Let's hope. Let's you know, hope. It's cool, though, in a way. I I'm always amazed that people want to hear our music. I'm thankful for it. But then you come along and do these kind of things and you're like, people actually want to know what we think about stuff or want to hear us talk about this stuff. And so I hope we do a good job of it. It needs to be entertaining and informative, I guess. Oh, yeah. I it, but yeah, it's, it's kind of fun and it's, it's an honor that anybody even cares. <laughs> so, oh, thank, thank you for doing it. 21 years, you know, you know, yeah. I've been, been a fan of the music and, um, yeah, and that's, that's how long that was. Yeah. I, it doesn't seem that long. It seems like yesterday it's to me. It doesn't seem that long. It's no. 
Time gets know. funny when you get to a certain point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I got to ask, like I asked everybody else, how did you guys deal with uh, the pandemic? I mean, mostly the quarantine. Well, As a band? Yeah. As a band and, you know, and music wise, you know, what? Well, you... luckily as a band, I mean, it, it had an impact, but not as strong. The, the, well, the biggest thing is Cruise the Edge. I'll let Steve tell about that. As far as the recording process, luckily, because of the way the band is set up with people in different locations, uh, at the time, I don't think it was that terribly drastic. You know, once we, we got were actually done months, with, we were done with the album. No, that's right. Yeah. I mean, it was literally just coming out. So we were able to start on uh, on the next one. And just kind of the early phases of that was just our writing and demoing. And once we started getting serious about recording it, things were easing up and, you know, musicians could come over and we could work and it was okay. Yeah. Unlike a lot of bands, there wasn't a string of shows that got canceled. Yeah. You know, I really felt bad for those people. Oh um, yeah, because that's crews and production staff and musicians and suddenly and club owners and the promoters and all these people that lost money uh, because of that. You know that's that's tough, and we didn't face that kind of thing because we don't do that kind of thing. We were we had you know the worst of it I guess was we were well rehearsed for the cruise to the edge show, uh, and it was about to we were going to go out and kick some butt. You know we were all psyched like up ten days away. I think yeah when they yeah. finally pulled the plug yeah so you know and but we, and we didn't we, want to we be stuck out there on the ship it. either huh yeah oh so we we were definitely concerned about you know whether everybody in the band was going to go if they said to go we would there, there was a point at which we were like well no it's not going to happen there's no way it can happen but we didn't know but they kind of did ride it up to the end before they decided to officially no we're not going to do this and and there was definitely yeah if you you're on pins and needles daily wondering what's going to happen is this going to go on should we keep rehearsing you well know, yeah we're on the pins and needles anyway i mean the the situation yeah. in the world was enough to rattle anybody but when you're trying to make a decision whether to and in our case we had the all the flights were were booked uh, hotel was booked it was you know we'd done a ton of work just getting passports and you know all band meetings so you know that was a that was a lot of effort that suddenly comes kind of crashing down so uh wasn't fun for anybody in the world you know no no and, for under, but, for I, any but i think it was, it was responsible of them to just finally say hey you know it's not going to happen We're not well, gonna they have a choice. you know they there weren't no, those ships weren't going to be leaving so yeah, it was going to happen, and yeah, uh, and probably for the best because you, you know nobody knew what was going on at the time. Um, well, like I, I, I said to a few people that um, as the fans, yes, you know we want to see you guys live, and then you guys want to play live. But I think right now in this day and age, we need to. Uh, do the responsible thing because you know we don't want to give you the, the artist anything you know we don't want to give you COVID if someone out there isn't vaccinated or whatever you know and they want to see you so bad but then so bad that you're going to make your favorite band sick you know it's well like so, you know we, on that I mean I think and we've all by the grace of God here, it's all been very well. I mean, we're, we're all have done fine. Um, but you know, there's, these are adults, you know, this, this isn't a room full of kids. Uh, people know what's going on. And I think if a band can decide, Hey, we want to go out and take that risk and an audience says, Hey, we we're okay with it. Let's do it. Then so be it. You know, it may seem and irresponsible. And if on stage and the audience out in the audience, I mean, I'm I, I wouldn't be too terribly concerned about that. There's a, you know, distancing there. Uh, it, the boat situation is where things get tricky because you are all kind of shoved together. Yes. Know, in that environment. And yeah. well, there's the year no before we, so. we were, we were already made. I mean, you walked in the diner or the uh, buffet and you, you alcoholed your hands and there were people standing there to make sure you did it. And that was 2018 or 19. 
Uh, so this was pre-COVID. There were already some strict uh, rules in yeah, place, I appreciate, and I, which I appreciate. Yeah. Nobody wants to go on a cruise and spend the whole time in a cabin sick. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And people, people do, and did it long before. Oh uh, yeah. COVID and the pandemic. It's it's been a, a thing with cruise ships. It's unavoidable. Yeah, they're all packed in like sardines. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And, but, you know, I'm glad, you know, there's um, just recently, you know, towards the beginning of the month, we had that hog stock in New Jersey where they, they were only, I think they were only allowed people, allowing people that were vaccinated in, but yep. then they also offered live stream. Yeah. yeah. Which, which I think and open up a new market place for you know when we get to that true post world where it's like you know you can actually have just a nice small little audience to have the to get the vibes off of each other and broadcast it you know live stream so people in all corners yeah, yeah. of the earth can you know it, I'd see I would guys. like to think of it I hope I would hope that's something that's in addition to yeah. because not that I'm a big concert goer because that stopped for me years ago, but there's nothing like going to see a band live. You can put the album on in your house and you can crank it up and it's not going to sound like a big PA stack right. uh, where suddenly the kick drum is, is, you know, thumping you in the chest. And uh, especially like on a cruise doing the big outdoor shows, there's a breeze blowing. It's just a great atmosphere. Oh, yeah. People are psyched and pumped and there's energy and, and that's not going to happen, you know, uh, you know it on a laptop. Yeah. But yeah, I, I do it, think it's a good thing and, and we've certainly made use of it, but I, I, I just hope it's something extra we can do, you know? Yeah. That, you know, I was thinking, you know, especially, you know, for people, you know, that are so far away that, you know, they want to see you, but, you know, it's so expensive, you know, Air yeah, flight, yeah. air yeah. flight, well, you know, and the hotels, which, you know, you know, pretty much, um, at least as a festival goer, you're hardly in your hotel and you're paying, you know, an arm and a leg for that. Then, right. You know? And yeah, so, streaming shows, it's definitely something that we should probably be thinking seriously about going forward. Yeah, it's it just uh, an extra way of getting to your fan base and new fans, I think, you know, and, uh, you know, like I was saying, you know, you can get yourself a night studio, maybe get a couple hundred or so, you know, people, you know, like a, uh, close fans and, and broadcast it live. So someone in Australia or someone in, right. in uh, Finland, they can watch it. Yeah. You know, and, because I think there's one one band that actually did that and successfully, I think, uh, Pineapple Thief, mm -hmm. and they uh, they're releasing next month. You know the, the the live CD and the and the Blu-ray of it. They they had all cameras. You know for they I think I don't know if they had an audience. You know that's you know maybe just a crew you know, and maybe close family, but. Uh, I, I haven't seen it. Not yeah, well, I've seen it. I think we've you know kind of put everybody back together and rehearsed and got ready for the uh, the cruise next year. Then uh, that might be something we'll look at. Yeah, I've always yeah. been a fan of the uh, Radiohead basement stuff too. Where they, oh yeah, they, big time. Those concerts from the uh, recording studio. Those always look really cool. There's like, lots yeah. of gear and you can light it really cool and. It's just kind of an interesting environment. So yeah, for a band like us, it'd be cool to set up, you know, just like a we would in a rehearsal. And you know, you do a couple songs and you stop and goof off for a while. I mean, I'd like to see a band, you know, actually talk to their streaming audience or do what they do at a rehearsal. You know, that's yeah. fun stuff to watch for me instead oh, yeah. of just making a big show. Just invite it's like be like uh inviting people to your rehearsal. And that Radiohead show wasn't quite like that, but I loved it. It was uh, an interesting way to film. Them. Yeah, it's live in the basements, right? That's what it's called. Or yeah, in the right. basement, 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, if you remember, what was it the nineties? Uh, MTV did that storytellers where they yeah they do a couple songs, they stop and talk about them, yeah. you know, the yeah. origin yeah. of the song, and you know, yeah, not a new idea. Yeah. You know, it's like I I I love those kind of things because I always like to know the origin of the song or you know why a band did did something a certain way you know differently you know you know so it's like those i think it gets for the fan they get closer to the band and they kind of get almost like get into their headspace Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> kind of figuring out what you know get what, out of my headspace. Your, your you know your character you know but you got to tell me how do you pronounce him? Hmm? How do you pronounce his name? Oh, our char character here. Yeah, Scaligram. Scaligram. Okay. I mean, that's the way I'm going to say it. It's an actual name. It's uh, you know Nordic, and maybe I've got it completely wrong. But uh, Scaligram is what I the way I pronounce it. Yeah, you know, you can have the you know to know what 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 he's all about and and you know that's i i liked concept albums because i like storytelling i like the, the escapism of it you know it's like yeah. i don't want yeah we but, do too <laughs> i you know i mean there's too much out there just talking about um i saw someone was telling me most of the newer bands are like it's just talking about me, 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 instead of like, you know, t tell me a story, you know, I, I got enough of me, 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 you know, I want to, I want to escape somewhere, you know, yeah, you know, somewhere, you know, whether it's a, a futuristic or a medieval or, you know, a completely, um, you know, something that was created, you know, it's like, I want, I want to escape Right. Yeah. I mean, I had somebody asking me in an interview earlier this week for a German magazine, like there's so many issues in the world right now. Why don't you want to write about those? And I explained to him that actually we are. I mean, this is a it's a fantasy story. But if you want to look at it and associate it with the world around you, that's what's there. But it's not something that's mandatory because people need to escape from all the crap that's around them right now so you can't uh, as a writer just tell some yarn that means nothing you know it has to have some application in the real world or it's just words on a page so but yeah to me i mean if i want to listen to a band i don't have to think that hard i want to put the headphones on and kind of go where they're going um so there's a story there on many levels it's mainly the basic level it's, our, our guy is uh he can't find his girl and somebody stole his memory so that's the essence of it but right, if right. you want to dig deeper there's plenty there uh that's comparable but yeah we've never been a band that sang about ourselves um and in a non allegorical yeah i mean yeah. i think that you know, there are bands that get away with you know having many songs of a singer unburdening themselves <laughs> right right yeah, I'm not really generally heavily into that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the drummer gets nothing out of that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I think we, you have uh, someone from your state that I, I've talked to a while back, um, Evershare. They're, they're doing yeah. the same. Cool. They're doing yeah. the same. Yeah I, know, yeah, I know that guy really well. Yeah, and, and he's doing... They're doing a concert, you know, a two-parter, you know, maybe more. I'm not sure. I don't remember how they described it, but it looks like so far it's a two-parter. But, it, you know, theirs is more based on some uh, on literature, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, so it's it's nice when, because then that, I think when, when a band goes – on you know does a concept album or maybe a song about some literature i think that opens up the doors for their fans to go explore that where their source yeah, material right. exactly. mm -hmm. yes 
yeah you know it's cerebral you know yeah it is kind of a little gift and if you like the album and you like the subject matter yeah maybe you can go check out what it was based on and you'll get a whole nother other thing yeah hemispheres you know you rush hemispheres you know jump to the mythology uh book and find out what these characters were all about and how did rush come up with this idea and that sort of thing that goes way back but then oh, yeah. you know there were albums like dark side of the moon that for many years i i didn't i knew it was a concept album and it flows together like a story without me having to have any idea what they're talking about huh. um that's why you can you can put uh what's the you can put it on alongside of uh the wizard of oz yeah oh yeah suddenly it's it's about the wizard of oz and it's it's well, perfect yeah, the, so, because there are a lot of concept albums that aren't concept albums in terms of a really strict story structure they're thematic yeah. albums yeah. so you can say we've done an album like dark side of the moon where all the songs touch upon madness in some way yeah but you know it's sure it is a concept album but not in the way that um, right I mean, maybe even something like Snoogie's. A linear story, yeah. Based on a specific story. And we've yeah. done those. Yeah. Well, you know, there's, um, you know, I like concept albums where you can, uh, it gives you, it's not just a, you guess the story within one listen, you know, it's like, then, it's the same with a movie, you know, if you get the movie and it's like, okay, well, when I watch it again, I'm not going to get anything else out of it. Yeah. But that's the one thing with the, uh, where's the rock? It's like, you should always go back to these albums and hear something different each time, you know? And I think it's, you know, just, uh, just, uh, different, um, you know, you're, your atmosphere, if you listen to it, you know, on your speakers or listen to it on your headphones, which I personally like to listen to in the headphones. Because then, yeah, you know, me too. Yeah. I, can, I can turn off the light, close my eyes, and I can go, you know, on that journey with the band, you know, yeah. and and that it's just, uh, I've done it with, you know, talking about Pink Floyd, I did it with uh, Echoes, you know, shut everything down. Um, at the stroke of midnight, listen to that thing, and you and it takes you to other worlds, you know. That you know, and it, it just that's the one thing I love about progressive rock. Is it takes you, you know, like I said before, it's an escapism. You yeah. know, well, if the band lays it out that way, which we try to do, that you know, that makes it a little easier. I think that's what I'm trying to do, and that's the way we why we structure. The order of the songs the way we do you know we want it to have a, a beginning a middle and an end just like it's the trilogy just think of each album as a trilogy it's got a, a beginning and a middle and an end it needs to have a peak uh, and then it needs to calm down just a little bit and then it needs to go for it right at the end and if, if you want to really emotionally engage a listener you know you design songs like that too you know um so yeah, it's all storytelling, I guess. Yeah, and, and the the second part of the album named "Into the Breach," it, I mean, with the heaviness that it fits, you know, "Into the Breach," you're not going to expect some ambient kind of mellow stuff. You know, "Into the Breach," it's like it's going head, head strong right in right into it. You know, not yeah, yeah. You know. I didn't think of that, but yeah. You know, that's when I when I saw that after listening to the album the first time and then looked at the album title, I was like, oh, it was just perfect. I mean, it Thank just, you. it told, told, it told people in a basic sense what's going on on the album. Now you got to go dig into it and, you know, find it out for yourself. Don't, you know, it's like, don't. And don't feel bad if you don't get it first time. No, no. no. I mean, we could do it if you laid it out right. And this is, the, I don't like the idea of this, but if you laid an album out correctly and it, they were all really actually disconnected songs, but there was musical 
you know, com they were comparable. You could come out in your publicity and say, hey, this album is about, you know, existentialism or, you know, some idea. And people are going to go, oh, and they're going to read that into it as soon as they listen to it, whether that was what it was about or not. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people kind of want to go where you want them to go. Um, so this, though, you know, I didn't think about that with the title. It, it says it all, I think. I mean, it's not going to be a, a pretty album. Into oh. the Breach. Yeah, Into the Breach. It's like he's, he's going for it, you know. It's like, and um, and I, I do look forward, you know, as everybody else does, you know, to, to the third part. And, you know, and I know you guys are going to surprise us again, you know. It's going to be Glass Hammer, but it's going to be a, a brand new Glass Hammer, you know. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope we stick with the same crew right now. Uh, oh, that's yeah. our plan, as long as our crew is happy. Uh, we're happy and um, and then of course it's a challenge because it has to top everything that came before it but I don't, we don't really think like that you know when it's not something we worry about but we'll have to come up with something that makes a fitting in for this uh, and, and a great album that could stand alone so that's the, huh so, so you're I worried am about it. no I don't I'm just now that I mentioned it yeah I'm worried about it, I am worried about it. <laughs> oh lord <laughs> yeah so we haven't written anything for that next album yet we kind of have a you know this general sense of how awesome it needs to be right but uh it will be it will be figure out how that sounds <laughs> to a, uh, if it were a tv show and i were going to pitch it to the producers i know how I would, in my mind i would pitch it yes as a, as a blend of the last album we just did and inconsolable secret yeah that might be an overreach, but that's what we want. The scope, at least, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then, you know, you you know, just take it to the next level. Be, be the, the, the progressive, progressive rock band. You know, the one that actually, yeah. that progress, you know, I, I, that's the one thing I just don't get with some bands. They say they're progressive, but they're really not. I mean, they're no. They and, stay. Well, you know, I, I think I, that I they're about stuck that. like in. It's almost like they're stuck in 1970 something. You know. Yeah, I mean, and to a certain extent, we are too. There's not only so many yeah, things I'm, you can do with rock, but right. and with progressive rock, maybe, you know, we're not capable of coming up with anything particularly new. But the way you put it all together can be. And the way it's presented can be. But yeah, I've never thought that it was our mission statement to be groundbreaking. Yeah, we're just trying to make a style of music that we enjoy hearing. Oh, yeah. That's really all it is. So any other, uh, you know, charges leveled at us of being derivative or something else? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's well, I've, 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 <laughs> heard, I've heard that, but I think some of those people are kind of on the nitpicky side you know at yeah. least, and for me you know whenever i read that you know i i've yeah i've seen several bands that are on the derivative side or as uh, an old friend of mine would call it regressive rock <laughs> right well i and, didn't realize how many bands like even bands in the 70s were imitating the beatles until 20 years later or 30 years later and they're like oh my gosh that, that cheap trick song is actually like the beatles you know it just didn't hit right. me at the time there's nothing new under the sun and, right uh, everything, everything has been done even things like you know these last couple albums each one has had a, a song on it that was just clearly and obviously inspired by rush and yeah. it's just it couldn't be more obvious and my attitude about that was simply it's so much fun i want to I want to play a Rush song. I want to do it. And we've written a Rush song, sort of. Not entirely, because the vocals are completely different. There's things. But, you know, from a guitar point of view, it's like, that's that's kind of a Rush song. But it's such a blast for us to do. And hopefully it becomes a blast to listen to. Because it's a kind of a time capsule thing. It's Rush of sort of a maybe never actually existed. It's our impression of what Rush could be in our head. So right. that makes sense. 
Yeah, and like, also it's, it's in your musical DNA. Starcastle was such a clone of Yes. It's like, it's funny because if you listen to Starcastle and say, what Yes album specifically does that sound like? There right. isn't one. It's right. sort of an album, you know, of, of sort of an ultimate Yes, that you a picture that you have in your mind. It's kind of interesting. They did sound like Yes, and there's no denying it, but which Yes actually did they sound like? That, it, you know, just like that was in their DNA, you know, Rush and everything else, you know, your influences are in your DNA. It's, it's absolutely there's no there's no there's no way of forcing it out, because if you force it out, you're not going to have have good music. You know, at least I don't. Um, yeah. And, you know, even Rush in their own minds were imitating Zeppelin and, you know, other bands. Uh I know Getty Lee tried to style himself after Chris Squire and exactly. Pete Townsend, uh, you know. So, and painters, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. art, they're all artists influence other artists and sculptors influence other sculptors. And, you, and people have to make comparisons, you know, especially if somebody does something as, I won't use the word blatant, but something as much in the spirit of a band like Rush or Yes. Uh, like we'll do every now and then it's obvious it should be obvious what we're trying to do and it should be obvious that it's being done because it's fun to do and it's fun to kind of see if you can do it and hopefully fun to listen to but yeah, yeah i don't yeah. I, I, anytime we get we're accused of that sort of thing i'm like show me any album by group x that you just said we sound like that sounds like that yeah, and hopefully it's just not the only peg that we have to hang our hat on. You know, it's it's an element. Every now and then we just kind of get the idea that yeah, we're really going to nail this sound. Yeah. But you know, it's it's hopefully we're a little uh, broader than that. Well, we nail it in the context of our band. You know, because if we set out to copy somebody, uh, we would copy them, and you we would try to do it in such a way you would not know. It's always there's a soul of a band though there's a soul of any band you know yeah. kind of a, like a metaphorical soul that you're you're never going to have i mean there's a soul to yes that's ineffable and you're not going to get there and, and rush and all the other bands you know right. you, you cannot match that all you can do is sort of take the trappings of what they did but it's still going to kind of be your own thing because you can't capture whatever magic it was that they had so no so it it's you know in the context to me of uh pop music today compared to the past it's, it seems to be kind of i don't know it just feels like it's just going through the motions there's no no soul to it you know there's just, some good stuff you know that you'll find on spotify you know speaking of yeah. streaming or youtube that's that's i would classify as pop or alt rock or things like that that are still very new or even they're like i i started listening to a lot of psychedelic bands that are fairly new and they're obviously copying bands way before their time but they're doing it in really new and impressive ways but that cookie cutter pop stuff that has always been kind of at the front of of traditional radio back in the day and now things that you'll see you know, you'll, you'll come across like a country music awards or some award show like that. And you hear this stuff and you go, oh, my gosh. I mean, this is it's it's worse now uh, than it ever was. Um, and it, I don't know if it can get worse, but I bet they'll find a way. Oh, yeah. You know, they'll they'll have some robots singing. So, yeah, well, that's probably already done, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, I just I just like adventurous music, whether it's you know a concept album or you know they people approach the music you know maybe from a slightly different angle you know instead of you know being the traditional you know um, sound you know I, that's why I like when bands you know when they're intros you know it's either it's going to be a a guitar. It's usually guitar intros, and then I like when all of a sudden you hear a bass intro, like on your last one. You know, it, I mean, I think that was the for me the most animated 
uh, bass sound I've heard from you guys. I mean, I, you know, your bass is good. It's just this one is like, I don't know, maybe you just took like an, an energy drink and just to pump it up, even, you know, uh, as I said, you know, goes to 11. <laughs> I think, too, we're consciously trying to keep our tempos up when they need to be uh, so that they they come across more like a rock band too that may be part of it there's you if a song needs to move along then bump it up a couple of clicks more than you think it ought to be and it, it'll 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 feel like energy it takes energy to play it that's for sure oh yeah and uh it was like you know you got you got progressive and you got rock got it not forget the rock part you know it's like, right uh, you know and and i think that's what a, a lot of bands tend to forget and they get um maybe they get too orchestral or too symphonic and yeah and it's like you're not necessarily in the rock category traditionally anymore you know you're in a different 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 setup you know and you know, I just, I, I like adventurous music, you know, it's basically when it comes down to, you know, whether it's pop, you know, rock, progressive rock. Well, Glass Hammer all. at this point is well established. So everybody knows we can do all that. Oh, yeah. You know? um, sadly, I think, you know, there was a lot of people that had made their minds up about us at different periods along the way. And, and all their opinions are formed on you know, a period of albums. Uh, and they're like, I, I got rid of them after that. You know, this is almost kind of like we could have changed the name of this band several times. It just from a marketing standpoint, just never made sense. Uh, as we change sounds, it's just makes more sense to me that we Fred and I are glass hammer and we keep doing this stuff the way exactly. we're doing it, which is it's never going to be the same. Uh, it shouldn't be the same. I mean, and my hats off to any of these bands in our genre that are playing uh, progressive rock however they want to play it it's not easy stuff to do but for us uh, that, that's adventurous would be the way i like to describe i like to think of each album as a challenge you know what are we going to do this time right uh, and hopefully we're moving forward well you know i i guess your album sales and and all the press that you get you know will show you know, so far of everybody talking about previous album and then now this one, you know, and of course it's in the early stages, you know, because it just was just released, yeah. what, on the 15th? It was on the yeah. 15th. Yeah. So, or you so. know, we're st yeah. still, you know, only uh, 14 days into it. So, you know, yeah. well, but, you know, it's like the, the, the true fans, you know, that's what, those are the opinions that you know that take you to take you guys to the next level i think probably with any album we we lose a few fans from decades past and we pick up i've, I've had fans friends I've that like, i've had friends that you know when i mentioned you they go oh they're still around and i go <laughs> do you pay attention to anything you know it's like it's like we have the internet now it's like any you know you can check to see if your favorite band is still around you know it's yeah easier than it was 20 30 years ago you know it's like so yeah the glass hammer is still you know, yeah like, yeah well go ahead fred oh, i said still kicking that's it yeah yeah and we've got you know there's fresh you know, there's young blood in the band now you know yeah um as Fred said, we got a 20 year old guitarist. Um, his, his, he might be an old soul when it comes to guitar, but still he's got fresh ears and our, our new singer's 25. So she brings a whole different uh, sort of vibe to the, to the game. And hopefully that it helps to kind of keep us on our toes and, and keep our ideas fresh. Yeah. So youthfulness is not a bad thing. Uh, right. And as our backup band, where, where Fred and I are at right now, <laughs> we're uh, we're gray and you know, right? Veterans, <laughs> veterans, veterans of Prague. Yeah, you know, 
it, and but the thing is, this is you're not you're not uh, opposed to new things, and that's that's the one thing that uh, some people, as they get older, they start getting opposed to new ideas, and you know, so it's like I. I mean, as I, I've gotten older, I think I've gotten into more stuff than I did 20, 30 years ago. You know, the, that version of me would look at this version and like, you like, like that? And it's like, yeah, I like it. You yeah. know, I used, I used to be afraid to say I like something. Now it's like, I don't care. You know, this is, this is what I like. You know, I'm, I'm at the, that age. It's like, you know, that I don't really care what it, anyone says, you know. <laughs> yeah and you know i'm 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 just thankful that a lot of a lot of the bands that i like are still putting out music you know just so it's like you know it's like friends you know it's like they're old friends you know it's like they're still you know uh putting out their music they're still telling me stories and you know, hopefully for many years to come. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah, you know, and and I just hope now now that we're getting we, we were into the breach, you know, with the pandemic now, hopefully we're gonna be on the other side and to allow you 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 as the band that if you want to start booking, you know, booking your shows, you know, that you can book them and, and get that, get your material out there to live so people can see and hear what it sounds like in a live atmosphere. And I'm hoping that if it's in an area that I'm close to, or I can get to, you know, that I, I can see it again. Like I, like I saw you guys in 2009 at uh, 3RP. Wow, yeah. At, uh, that was a nice festival. That was yeah, that was awesome. It was very cozy because it was, you know, not a lot yeah, of people yeah. and just enough, you know, where you're not, you know, you know, crunched in to, be, to the person next to you, you know. And the worst of it that I remember was the, the only bad thing about that to me was there was like this big air conditioning unit that hummed the entire time. And when there was silence between songs, it you know, sounded like you were in some kind of refrigeration unit. I, I don't know why I remember these things, but it was just a loud, <laughs> obnoxious. It made it not feel very, like a concert, but the people that ran it were fantastic and the bands were great. And oh yeah, uh, we had a great time. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was, it was so far my first and only time I've seen you guys. And, yeah. Well, and it it was it was good to see, to finally see you guys after you know 2009. So that was nine years into knowing knowing you guys. So I was like, yeah, that's, that's it. Doesn't it feel like it's so? It's you know 2009 back. You know, nicer yeah, nicer yeah. times, nicer times for me at least. You know, and you know enjoyable. Yeah. And I, I look forward to more from you guys. Thank and, you. you. know, it's like, uh, and I'm going to fix the thing, whatever was going on wrong with my my PayPal. It wasn't even showing any of my <laughs> payments on that. And they kept on giving me error messages. So I got to go in there and fix that so I can get, get your CD. So, oh, you there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you froze a little bit. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like I said, I'm just gonna try after the show to order the CD, and hopefully PayPal um, cooperates with me. Is he asking for a CD, Fred? No, no, no! I'm, I'm, I need to just, dude, man. I need to just send you a CD. Oh no, I don't mind paying. Doing a I, show. Don't mind, I don't mind paying for it. You know. It's, yeah, no. It helps that's, you guys. Okay. It helps you guys for the next one. What if it, yeah. What if PayPal messes up and your whole bank accounts? 
gone. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. All right. Well, um, well, thank you both for taking the time out of your day to join me. I Absolutely. Know you're in, oh, it was great. And, a lot of fun. and, and uh, I look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Absolutely. Maybe Let's when the do. when the next one comes out, we can do something like this again. That'd be great. We appreciate right. it, Ron. Oh, you're welcome. You know, thank you. You know, I appreciate you guys' music. You know, it's my escape. Thanks. Oh, Good we're day. glad. We appreciate it. All right. Well, thank thank you again, and um, this this will be on uh, my YouTube channel within the hour. Nice. Okay. Good deal. Um, I think I'm can, about dropped my battery, so it's uh, yeah, it's, it's a good about thing. We're almost it's about ready. time. On, man. Okay. We okay. Well, we'll see uh, you. All right. See you soon. Thanks, Thanks a lot. We have to go. All right. Goodbye.